Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News. And on this episode of Tested, you can see here that we have a couple different graphics cards, as well as the ones in the PC above my head. And what we're doing today is we're going to find out what's the best CPU and graphics combination for video editors like myself and other professionals. So let's find out. So let's take a look at the possible combinations here. Starting with the GPUs, you can see here that I have a 1050 Ti made by EVGA, a 1060 by MSI, a Founders Edition 1070, and then two Founders Editions 1080s. And those are all the graphics card po possibilities right now. And honestly, it's a good representation of the market right now. There are AMD cards, obviously, but Right now, these will suffice as far as the equivalent AMD kind of card. Obviously, the 580 and 570 perform very similar to the 1050 Ti and 1060. So, looking at all the systems to test, I have three different systems here. One has the i7-6700K in it, which is a four-core processor. Then the other one has a 6850K, which is a six-core processor. And then the last one has a Ryzen 7 1800X, which is an eight core processor. So we're kind of going all the way from a four core all the way up to an eight core. And we're gonna see which one plus which graphics card is the best combination for video editors and video professionals. On a side note, all three of these boards are made by different manufacturers and all these graphics cards are made by different manufacturers as well. So this does play into the fact that it's not going to be a perfect scientific experiment, but it is a good representation of similar products. So obviously if you have a different motherboard and a different graphics card brand and stuff like that, it will be very similar performance, but not exactly the same. And all three of these systems will be using 16 gigs of RAM just to keep that consistent across the board. Like I just mentioned though, they won't be the same brand of RAM just because I don't have that luxury of having that many DIMMs, but they will all be running at the same speed just to keep that as a consistency across the board so that doesn't play into a factor between the CPU choice and graphics card choice. So let's move on to the testing. So in testing rig number one, the first thing I did was test the real-time rendering performance of each GPU with the 1800X. I used the video project from my last YouTube video, that way it was a real-world test and played the timeline with each GPU at one half resolution. As you can see, all four GPUs stutter, especially over titles and other animations, and I honestly can't say that one GPU is performing any better than another. The GTX 1050 Ti seems to be performing almost exactly the same as the GTX 1080. In the second test, I rendered the video out for each GPU in the YouTube 4K H.264 preset. In this testing, the GTX 1060 came in first with a time of 12 minutes and 52 seconds. The GTX 1080 and 1070 tied with a time of 13 minutes and 13 seconds and the GTX 1050 Ti came in last with a time of 14 minutes and 22 seconds. So let's move to the next testing rig. So in testing rig number two, I again tested the real-time rendering performance, but this time with the i7-6850K. Again, watching all four of the GPUs, all of them stutter and have the same performance as the last test. In the second test, I rendered the video out on this rig with the same preset and everything from the last rig. The GTX 1070 won this time with a time of 15 minutes and 22 seconds. The GTX 1060 came in second with a time of 15 minutes and 26 seconds. The GTX 1050 Ti came in third with a time of 15 minutes and 32 seconds. And the most expensive card, the GTX 1080, 
came in last with a time of 15 minutes and 44 seconds. So moving on to the last rig. Finally, I tested rig number three that has the i7-6700K with the same methodology as before. Test one again led to stuttering and no discernible difference between the GPUs. In test number two, the GTX 1070 won with a time of 17 minutes and 51 seconds. The GTX 1050 Ti came in second with a time of 17 minutes and 55 seconds. The GTX 1060 came in third with a time of 17 minutes and 56 seconds, and the GTX 1080 came in last with a time of 17 minutes and 58 seconds. So looking at the results of this testing, what this actually proved was that Adobe Premiere does not use a ton of GPU power while rendering. It's almost entirely CPU based because the difference between a 1050 Ti and a 1080 was negligible. Pretty much the 1080 lost in two of the tests and the 1050 Ti would always do pretty well as well. It's pretty much random how each graphics card performed because what actually was occurring was that Every time you test the CPU in a rendering time, it's gonna perform differently. And that's what was actually happening. When you watch the utilization of the GPU during rendering time, the use of the GPU can go anywhere between 5% utilization and all the way up to maybe like 30 was the highest I saw. But what that tells me is that Adobe Premiere only uses the GPU acceleration for certain aspects in a video render. So you're not really going to get a huge performance by choosing a 1080 or a 1070 over a 1060 or a 1050 Ti. As far as video editors are concerned, pretty much all of them are going to be exactly the same as far as their performance, just because it utilizes some of the video RAM for rendering, but it doesn't use a lot of the processing power of that GPU. So when you're looking at a 1050 Ti versus 1080, both have enough video RAM for the rendering to actually utilize, but it's not really using a ton of the processing power, and that's what's the main difference between a 1050 Ti and a 1080. Yes, there is a difference in amount of video RAM, but Adobe Premiere only uses a little bit of video RAM during rendering time, so that part's negligible as well. But the interesting thing that ended up coming about is when you look at the graph, you can see that the 1800X performed the best of all three processors as far as the rendering times are concerned, which makes sense because it has eight cores, the 6850K has six cores, and then the 6700K has four cores. And as you can see by the render times, the eight core processor had the best, the six core processor had the second best, and the four core processor had the third best. But was what was more interesting about that testing was the actual differences in times between the four different graphics cards. The i7-6700K had the least standard deviation of any of the processors I tested, meaning that it had the smallest gap between the fastest render time and the slowest render time using that processor. The 6850K had the second smallest standard deviation with a slightly larger gap compared to the 6700K. But then the Ryzen 1800X, even though it had the best times from even its worst render time to its best render time, all four of those times were better than both the 6850K and the 6700K. However, the standard deviation was quite large. And really what that comes down to is that Adobe Premiere still hasn't optimized for Ryzen processors. So there is still a big difference every time you hit that render button the actual time can vary quite a bit when it comes to a Ryzen processor, just because again, Adobe Premiere has not optimized towards those processors yet. So maybe we can get a little bit better performance out of those processors if Adobe Premiere does optimize, but more likely it'll just be a smaller standard deviation when they finally do optimize it a little bit better. 
Other than that, I thought this testing ended up coming out very interesting, and it ended up proving a question a lot of people were asking about my portable PC. In the last video, I upgraded my portable PC to the 1800X. A lot of people were asking why I would pair an 1800X with a GTX 1050 Ti. And the reason I did that is because it is a video editing rig, not really a gaming rig. I think I've played a game on that rig a handful of times. And it games pretty well, especially for 1080p. A 1050 Ti does very well for gaming. But that's not why it has an 1800X in there. It has an 1800X because that chip is the best mini ITX chip you can get right now for video editing. And that's why it's paired with the 1050 Ti because this testing proved that the video card really doesn't make much of a difference in render times or even during the natural playback in Premiere. So that's why I have those two paired because I wanted the smallest case possible which forces me to use the 1050 Ti and the most powerful processor I can get which was the 1800X. So this test really proved that to me. If you guys have any other testing questions or anything like that about this testing, I'll be sure to answer them in the comments. And if you guys have any other ideas for the other graphics cards here, for other kinds of tests on this channel, I'll be sure to do them if you guys just let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys liked this video. If you ever want to support the channel, you can always check out the Patreon link down below or the Amazon affiliate links in the description below as well. And just as a sneak peek, I know I mentioned a while ago that the portable PC was going to be battery powered and I finally have all the parts in to make that happen. So over this next week I'm going to start working on making this PC battery powered. I'm going to test it all out outside of that case and then try to fit it all into that case. So it should be interesting to see how that will all work. But I'll definitely have some videos posted soon about that. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hope to see you guys in the next video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!